to New Heights at Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you are here with us this, this evening. Whether you're tuning in on Facebook or YouTube Live, we are glad that you are with us. I'm happy to be joined by some of our friends that regularly play for the New Heights service, Ms. Claren Clark, Matt Stone on guitar, and behind me is uh, Pat Lindsay doing some percussion beats. Also, we have Reverend Jay Clark here tonight uh, to share a word of devotion later this evening that we hope will speak to you um, in your time uh, that you are spending at home with your family. And um, we hope that everyone is staying safe out there as best as they can. And again, we're just glad that you are here watching this video with us and we are happy to be worshiping with you. Let us sing. Bless the Lord of my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name, sing like never before.
Would you pray with me? Spirit of God, we have heard your call to share in building up the kingdom of God. Fill us with the desire to change ourselves and to change the world. Inflame our passion for justice into a commitment to address unjust situations and structures. Deepen our concern for our sisters and brothers in America and overseas who endure the burdens of poverty, war, exploitation, and persecution. Let us enthusiastically play our part in the mission of the church in the modern world. Banish any complacency in our hearts and minds. Teach us to recognize the lack of justice. May we always act in the spirit of justice. May we envisage, pray about, and create a different sort of world in which injustice is replaced with a renewed sense of solidarity and care. Enlivened by the Spirit, may we go forth in the peace of the Holy Spirit to love and to serve the Lord. Amen. shepherd I shall not in green pastures he makes me lie down he restores my soul and leads me home for his name for his great name Surely goodness, surely mercy, right beside me all my days, and I will dwell in your house for
It's good to be with everyone tonight. Uh, I'm going to be reading two different versions of the gospel les lesson from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 through 30. The first one is from the New Revised Standard Version, which is typically the, the one we hear in worship. And then uh, the other one is from Eugene Peterson's The Message, which is another interpretation. And I always like to say, it's not the Bible that I study, but it's the one that I like to read because they're very different tonight. So here are these words. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed, but you did not mourn. For John, John the Baptist, for John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he is a demon. And the Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. And then he began to reproach the cities in which most of his deeds of power had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin! Woe to you, Bethsaida! For if the deeds of power done in you had been done in Tyre or Sidon, then they would have represented long ago as in sackcloth. They would have repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, on the day of judgment, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon than for you. And you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? No, you will be brought down to Hades. For if the deeds of power done to you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I tell you that on judgment day, it will be more tolerable that for the land of Sodom than for you. Okay? So, it continues with, at this time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them in, to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. No one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. That's the, and the last of that is the one that everyone remembers from that story. Now the message version goes something like this. How can I account for this generation? The people have been like spoiled children whining to their parents. We wanted to skip rope. But you were always too tired. We wanted to talk, but you were always too busy. John came fasting, and they called him crazy. I came feasting, and they called me a lush and a friend of the riffraff. Opinion polls don't count for much, do they? The proof of the pudding is in the eating. Next, Jesus let, the, let fly on the cities where he had worked the hardest but whose people had responded the least, shrugging their shoulders and going their own, own way. Doom to you, Chorazin. Doom, Bethsaida. If Tyre and Sidon had seen half of the powerful miracles you have seen, they would have been on their knees in a minute. At judgment day, they'll get off easy compared to you. And Capernaum, 
with all your peacock strutting, you are going to end up in the abyss. If the people of Sodom had 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 your chances, the city would still be around, and at judgment day, they'll get off easy compared to you. And then abruptly, Jesus broke into prayer, thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You've concealed your ways from the sophisticates and know-it-alls, but spelled them out clearly to ordinary people. Yes, Father, that's the way you like to work. Jesus resumed talking to the people, but now he was talking tenderly. The Father has given me all these things to do and to say. This is a unique father-son operation coming out of father and son intimacies and knowledge. No one knows the son the way the father does, nor the father the way the son does. But I'm not keeping it to myself. I'm ready to go over it line by line with anyone willing to listen. Are you tired? Are you worn out? burned out on religion, then come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me, and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. The Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As I kept reading through this sermon for tonight, I found myself saying it over and over again in an Andy Rooney voice. And if you don't know who Andy Rooney is, you'll have to look it up because he was kind of entertaining. But let's cut to the chase. I love this story from Matthew because first, Jesus is going on a bit of a tear, saying that John the Baptist came eating and drinking and you said he's a demon. But the Son of Man comes eating and drinking, and you say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, plus he likes sinners. I'm sure that Jesus felt like he was on the walk of shame. And then all these cities that Jesus had spent time and effort in, he goes off on them. Can you imagine? It, this seems like it was Jesus' horrible, no good, very bad day. Or, or maybe it was someone else's. But then something changes about Jesus in the middle of this story. Something is different. The, the tone softens and he, he offers grace. And then he gives not one invitation, but two invitations. Is it, is it possible, is it possible to get burnout during the coronavirus? One can get burnout in, in anything, school, job, work, church, and, and I'm sure that all of us have been there and experienced burnout in some form or fashion. And more often than not, uh, we tend to be overachievers. We are running around, at least we were running around before COVID, and then things kind of grinded to a halt for a lot of people. And I hope your faith didn't grind to a halt too. Even without being physically present in this sanctuary, that's not a free pass to not pray or to read Scripture or to help someone. There are still lots of ways to engage God in your day-to-day -day life, and we should be doing some of that each day. And maybe that's why Jesus is so frustrated at the beginning of this story. As much as we're looking forward to being back to a new normal especially here at the church. We're just really glad when you worship with us by computer or tablet or TV because this is indeed a place for people who may be a little burned out um, and need to catch a breath and recharge for the week. As we celebrate Independence Day this weekend, I'm reminded of the inscription by Emma Lazarus, from Emma, Emma Lazarus's The New Colossus. It's on the pedestal of the Statue of Liberty in the Manhattan Harbor. She writes, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched re refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me, 
I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Sound familiar when you compare it with our scripture lesson? It seems to echo Jesus' come to me all who are heavy laden. Several times a day, my watch buzzes to remind me to breathe. And we need that breath to survive, and it's especially helpful when we're overwhelmed. It's almost like we need to exhale the poisons inside us and breathe in the goodness that Christ offers us, more of a spiritual oxygen, if you will. After all, Jesus knew the importance of rest. Think how many times that Jesus was going about his stuff and he just needed to get away from everyone and go to a a secluded spot and pray. People wanted what Jesus offers. Hope, courage, forgiveness, healing, living water to live life. So we're going to try something as you're watching this. And I want you to get comfortable And I want you to close your eyes unless you're listening to this while driving. So I want you to close your eyes because we're going to take two minutes, two minutes just to breathe. And I'm going to ask you to breathe in through your nose and out through your mouth. Exhale the bad and inhale the goodness that Christ offers. And as you're breathing, I'm going to ask Jacob in our control room to put the camera on the rose window in the sanctuary. And I I want you to be thinking about these words as you're inhaling and exhaling. Come to me and I will give you rest. Come to me and I will give you rest. I'll keep the time. Come to me, and I will give you rest. Two minutes is a long time, isn't it? But then we think about this scripture, and we think about the invitation that Jesus is offering. Because Jesus offers us so much. Come to me and rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Reverend Mel Williams outlined four gifts from Jesus in this passage. It's especially important during this time of physical distancing and masks and staying more to ourselves. And here are the four things. Take time for Sabbath. Sabbath is a day of rest. It's more than sleep. It's a reconnection with God and to being alive. It's a state of being, not a state of doing. 
Jesus offers us the Sabbath rest. Number two, Jesus offers us a way to rid ourselves of the messes that life and our humanness create. In the 80s, the slogan was, let go and let God. Oftentimes, we have to empty ourselves to find that fullness again. Number three, Jesus offers living water. It, help us, it helps us find completeness. It helps us uh, find wholeness. It helps us find fullness. Jesus doesn't offer a half-life. Jesus offers a full life. And the last is the gift of energy for our work, work in the world, the work that God charges us with. Come to me, Jesus says, to live the way that I live. I will give you rest, life-giving rest. And this is our Christian hope. Number four is important because it's our mandate. And although we are invited to, to lay our burdens down, our, our shoulders don't stay empty for long because Jesus offers his yoke. If you don't know what a yoke is, it's a, it's a large piece of wood that connects two oxen to till the dirt or, or haul something. So becoming an, an ox with Christ is, is quite an image. Working together connects us to God, and there, there is no doubt about that. And as we close this time together, Hopefully these words are on your mind. And I want you to even say them out loud or at least think them in your head. Come to me, all who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden light. That is Jesus' invitation to all of us. And it's a personal one. And in true form, it's open to everyone. Come to me all who are heavy burdened with the weight of your world. It's not just reserved for a special group of people. It's not, come to me, some of you who are burdened. It's for everyone. Everyone is invited to follow Jesus. What are those heavy burdens that we see around the world right now? Or in our communities? Or even in our homes? Come to me, all who are heavy burdened. Let us pray. Oh God, help us to lay down our burdens and enable us to wear the yoke of Jesus so we can help bear the burdens of others. We know because of you, we, we know you are working within us and it will lighten our load and connect us more with the source of all life in whose name we pray, amen.
Next week, Reverend Kathleen McMurray will be with you in this space uh, during this New Heights time. Uh, she's one of our new uh, pastors here, and I hope you'll tune in and, and uh, listen to her. Also, this is the weekend that we welcome two new pastors. Kathleen will be here, and also Dr. John Robbins. John will be bringing us our message on Sunday morning. And also, a Bible study will begin next week. So I hope you'll tune in and, uh, and uh, so you can see what's going on in the life of the church and join us. So go from wherever you are, wherever you're watching, and remember to accept Jesus' invitation to lay down your burdens so that you can go back out in the world recharged to help others find more about the kingdom of God. Amen. Thank you.